It's another beautiful day. We're going to go ahead and uh, clean on the barn today and clean out the chicken coop. And it's a great day to also talk about compost and deep bedding. Let's get busy. Okay, I'm over here at the compost pile. This pile that I'm at currently is probably two years old. Um, if, you, if you look at this dirt, it's real uh, fertile. So what we've kind of been studying here seems to be important to us is, is how conventional farming has actually depleted the soil of its uh, vital nutrients. Um, I think that's why compost is so important. It's because all the minerals and things that you give your, your livestock all that stuff goes into their digestive system and with a mix of hay and, and their manure it actually becomes great compost and I think that's why vegetables and things they grow so much better in a composted soil so our compost mainly is, uh, is hay and uh, goat manure we have some chicken manure in here as well and maybe a little bit of table scraps and, and uh, garden um, I guess garden scraps. It seems like this is a very good soil. Uh, in order to to get in the, into this consistency, it has to be rotated every few months. So we're trying to do something maybe quarterly or something. I'll bring the tractor over here and I'll scoop it and I'll roll it over and let the rain and moisture get to the top and the drier stuff goes to the bottom and then all the microorganisms and the worms and things, they'll go up through there and eat it up and uh, turn it into dirt. We've been using this for a couple years now uh, through our beds, our raised garden beds. And uh, it seems like the, the plants and stuff, they really take off with it and they do very well. Um, I wanna dig through here a little bit um, and show you guys some more of this dirt and just show you how dark and rich it looks if I could speak over the rooster <laughs> yeah as you can tell how dark and rich this soil is It's not completely broke down, but it's in, it's in pretty good shape to use in the garden this year. I'll take you over here and show you what a fresh pile looks like, which you know it takes a year or two to, to, get, the, to get this consistency. So down here to my left, that is some compost that's just about a year old. So as you can tell, it's not ready yet. It's not really broken down. It's got a lot of, a lot of hay material and stuff in it. Um, I plan on taking the tractor over here and I'm going to turn this because it's, it's time to do it. So as I dig through there a little bit, you can see how it's turning dry. See that dry stuff there? It's kind of hard to tell. But this stuff's a lot drier than what's on top. So we'll just, we'll just rotate this around and we're supposed to get some rain this week. And uh, hopefully it'll turn. I don't think we'll be using this this year because it's not going to be ready. But I think we'll have enough in that other pile over there. Okay, so this is the hay and manure that we just brought out of the barn and brought over here. And uh, we'll just pile it up here. I'll kind of scoot this out of the way. We'll make our own separate pile for, for the new stuff. So we kind of know our rotation of what what is good or, or how old it is and go from there. So the compost directly behind me here, that compost there is roughly around a year old and it's not ready yet. It's got a lot of dry material in there. So we need to rotate that and get, get, it, uh, get it going a little bit better. Um, right down below me here on the, 
on this side is the stuff that we just brought out of the barn. So we'll make a separate we'll make a separate pile for that so we kind of understand you know what's ready and what's not ready or how old a pile is compared to another pile and uh, we'll go from there. I want to show you the process of one of our compost mountains as the boys calls it. So let me show you what that looks like now. So this pile right right here was all the way up to about right where this branch was. It was massive and it went it broke down over I guess a year maybe. A couple yeah, probably about six months. Oh, okay, six months. Yeah, because that would make sense. Um that's when we did that in in spring. In spring we brought it all out and we piled it there and it was just so huge, but you can see the progress over time, how much that is actually broke down. Now we was going to do this with a wheelbarrow and just kind of get some of the deep litter, deep bedding out of the barn, but we're just gonna pull out the big gun to get the tractor to get it done quicker so we can enjoy this beautiful day. Okay, we're back at the barn here. Um, what we just wanted to talk about also is we uh, we choose to do the deep litter method. Um, that consists of layering hay um, down as they as they soil it. Soil it. They we add an extra layer just of clean hay, and we'll So what happens is now they think she's getting hay. <laughs> now, now they think I'm getting hay. Okay, so this here is what we're putting down. Uh, this is, it's really dry. It basically looks like straw. This isn't good quality hay for them to eat. So this is what we're using for our chickens and also our goats. Yeah, and uh, when that breaks down, that's, that's we, we clean it out and we'll take it over to the compost pile and it'll break down even further in the soil. And the advantage of that is for a garden is, you know, right all their all their uh, urine all their minerals and stuff in their manure and uh, the hay breaking down naturally that's all good for compost compost or the soil right right and for building back the soil like uh rejuvenation is that yeah. the word i'm looking for rejuvenating the soil yeah so i mean it's just a natural process and that's what we choose to do now some people that have goats do not use this method. They prefer to clean it out regularly. Now we do this one for the heat for the goats, but also we don't just leave it that way for months on end. It's January, it's a 60 degree day. So we're cleaning out the barn to give them fresh bedding to start putting down to start going ahead and filling up to make it, um, I guess the, the layer of compost, the compost pizza, I guess. It's actually February. Oh shoot, it is February. <laughs> okay, so it is February and it's 60 degrees. So we are cleaning out the barn and we don't allow it to to just keep getting higher and higher and higher with their waste. We do clean it out, but not as often as some. And I do recommend that uh, you make sure it's very sanitary. Um, check it daily to see what ne what layers need to go down where. And then also to to make sure their hooves are trimmed and cleaned and cared for during this time also you don't want their hooves to be overgrown and all that be getting up in there which you should off, obviously trim them before fall winter thing depending on your goat's needs but with the deep litter i prefer to definitely keep track of them so i highly recommend that you want monitor their hooves so they're not constantly in this sort of waste and getting their feet wet um, and having bacteria like hoof rot and things of that nature start to form. You want the lovies? You want the lovies? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. She likes the rub. Now I do not recommend rubbing goat's horns. They do not like that and they also will um, consider that as like a headbutt. But she, I know her I know her personality and she's okay for me to do that. She really likes to rub her horns on us and we looked it up and it's to give scent and to give love. Um, so I just, that's why I rub her horns. Now some of them I would not. 
Get good girl. We currently got the gate off the front of the barn so we can get in here to clean out with the tractor. Justin is scraping over here to bring where the tractor can't get into the pathway, the alleyway where the tractor is able to pick it up and clean it and get it out of here. Now we do have the girls in their outside paddock. We sectioned them off. Normally we do have them out on grass but there's really not much grass at the moment. So they're just gonna, so then we could just go right through the alleyway and out, but we really don't wanna track a lot of mud and there's not much grass. So this is what we're gonna do is just pull in, he's gonna scoop and pull out and go take it to the compost.
is this rooster that was dropped off to us this morning. He was quite the surprise. We don't know where he came from. He's very pretty. But uh, that is another rooster dropped off. So if you're familiar with Goner's story, then, or if, if you're not familiar with Goner's story, he's another rooster that was dropped off to us too. So this guy is the second rooster that we've had since we lived on the farm being dropped off to us. And that's actually like one a year now. We have no idea where they're coming from um, or how they got here. Uh, that one looks like he's got a little bit of frostbite on his comb, but I don't know. I don't know what to make of all these roosters and where they're coming from. Anybody else have that happen at their homesteads? Let me know in the comments. We have now got all the majority of the compost hay out of the goat barn and we left the thin layer down and put fresh hay over the top of it. So now we're going to go ahead and fill up their feeder. We got that back in place and we're going to put the goat, this other gate up for the goats and then we're going to let them back in. Okay. Uh, I forgot to hit the record button. <laughs> okay. We got the gate back on. Now we'll just fill up the hay feeder and let the uh, goats back in here. Oh, and their water or two. Yeah, we gotta fill. We gotta clean their water thing. So you won't believe what I did. What? So I went to go fill the boys' water tank up, and then I caught the, I caught. What? Well, they can hear too. I caught the hose on the um, fence post, and then to check it. So just so you know, we have a valve that splits the hose, and you could shut it off. What are them things called? Like a three-way? Yeah, or something? it's like a. A Y splitter. Yeah. Oh well. So anyway, I go, I went to check it to make sure that I didn't um, have it leaking, and I accidentally opened it and it sprayed me all in the face and in my shirt. <laughs> Look at my shirt. I know, I see it's so. <laughs> and he's seen it too. It sprayed me right in the it face. He got on her shirt and he got on her face and she was cracking up. And I didn't do it but once. I did it twice. <laughs> I'm so I'm gonna I need to go change. Yeah. Okay. Let's head back to the house. All right. Yeah. Well, that was a full day's worth of work that we just did. So we're gonna go in and enjoy some family time and we hope and pray that you enjoy your day with family as well. Please like and subscribe. We'll see you on the next video. Have a good day. God bless you. God bless. We'll see you on the God next one. You.